Dear students, welcome to EPG Patshala. I am Dr. Mary Vinita Thomas, Assistant Professor, Department of Education, Central University of Kerala. Today, we will discuss the module on Teacher Education in India, a Historical Perspective. The main objectives of this module are to understand the concept of teacher education, to gain insight and reflect on the objectives of teacher education in India, to get acquainted with and reflect on the current concerns of teacher education in India, to gain deep insight on teacher education during pre-independence and post-independence period in India, to promote a better understanding of the various commission reports on teacher education in India, to reflect on the suggestions given by various committees and commissions on teacher education during pre-independence and post-independence era. So first, let us have a look at the concept of teacher education. Teacher education refers to the policies and procedures designed to equip prospective teachers with the knowledge, attitudes, behaviors and skills they require to perform their tasks effectively in the classroom, school and wider community. The National Council for Teacher Education has defined teacher education as a program of education, research and training of persons to teach from pre-primary to higher education level. Although ideally it should be conceived of and organized as a seamless continuum, teacher education is often divided into three stages. The first one, which is very familiar to all of us, the pre-service stage, the initial teacher training course before entering the classroom as a fully responsible teacher. For example, we have the B.Ed, the M.Ed courses. The next stage is the induction, the process of providing training and support during the first few years of teaching or the first year in a particular school. When a teacher enters into the teaching profession as a fresher, it is not just that she goes and teaches in a class. She needs to feel comfortable with the school, the work climate, with the administration, management, etc. So she needs a kind of mentoring there and that is provided by induction. The third stage is in-service, that is teacher development or continuing professional development process for practicing teachers. Because once when a teacher enters into the school and she feels that, okay, pre-service is done, now I am a teacher and I need to learn more. But that is a wrong notion because once we become a teacher, that is when we need to learn more and continuously update ourselves. So in-service programs helps for that. Teacher education is a program that is related to the development of teacher proficiency and competence that will enable and empower the teacher to meet the requirements of the profession and face the challenges. Teacher education encompasses teaching skills, sound pedagogical theory and professional skills. Now let us see some of the objectives, main objectives of teacher education as given by the National Council Framework for Teacher Education. To prepare teachers to care for children, enjoy to be with them, seek knowledge, own responsibility towards society and work to build a better world, develop sensitivity to the problems of the learners, commitment to justice and zeal for social reconstruction. The next one, help teachers to view learners as active participants in their own learning and not as mere recipients of knowledge. They need to encourage their capacity to construct knowledge and ensure that learning shifts away from rote methods. Learning is to be viewed as a search for meaning out of personal experiences and knowledge generation as a continuously evolving process of reflective learning. Next is engage theory along with field experiences to help trainees to view knowledge not as external to the learner, but as something that is actively constructed during learning. Teacher education should integrate academic knowledge and professional learning into a meaningful whole. To train in organizing learner-centered activity-based participatory learning experiences like play, 
projects, discussion, dialogue, observation, visits, integrating academic learning with productive work. Then to engage teachers with the curriculum, syllabi and textbooks to critically examine them rather than taking them as given and accepted without question. To provide opportunity to student teachers for reflection and independent study without packing the training schedule with teacher directed activities alone. To engage teachers with children in real contexts rather than teach them about children through theories alone. It should help them understand the psychosocial attributes and needs of learners, their special abilities and characteristics, their preferred mode of cognition, motivation and learning resulting from home and community socialization. To develop social sensitivity and consciousness and finer human sensibilities. Next, to broaden the curriculum, both school and teacher education curriculum, to include different traditions of knowledge, educate teachers to connect school knowledge with community knowledge and life outside the school, which is very important. To help teachers appreciate the potential of hands-on experience as a pedagogic medium, both inside as well as outside the classroom and work as integral to the process of education. To teach trainees to reconceptualize citizenship education in terms of human rights and approaches of critical pedagogy, emphasize environment and its protection, living in harmony with oneself and with natural and social environment, promote peace, democratic way of life, constitutional values of equality, justice, liberty, fraternity and secularism and caring values. Provide due place for the evaluation of attitudes, values, dispositions, habits and hobbies in addition to the conceptual and pedagogical aspects through appropriate quantitative as well as qualitative parameters. So now dear students, let us see some of the current concerns of teacher education as mentioned by NCF 2005. The first concern they have expressed is, experiences in the practice of teacher education indicate that knowledge is treated as given, embedded in the curriculum and accepted without question. There is no engagement with the curriculum. Curriculum, syllabi and textbooks are never critically examined by the student teacher or the regular teacher. The next, language proficiency of the teacher needs to be enhanced, but existing programs do not recognize the centrality of language in the curriculum. Teacher education programs are providing little scope for student teachers to reflect on their own experiences. And also, disciplinary knowledge is viewed as independent of professional training in pedagogy. Repeated practice in the teaching of a specified number of isolated lessons is considered a sufficient condition for professional development, which exactly is not. It is assumed that links between learning theories and models and teaching methods are automatically formed in the understanding developed by student teachers. There is no opportunity for teachers to examine their own biases and beliefs and reflect on their own experiences as part of classroom discourse and inquiry. Theory courses have no clear link with practical work and ground realities. And the evaluation system followed in teacher education programs is too information oriented, excessively quantitative and lacks comprehensiveness. Apart from conceptual and pedagogical aspects, existing programs need to develop certain attitudes dispositions, habits and interests in a teacher. The present evaluation protocol has no place for evaluating these aspects. The following are a few recommendations given by Justice Verma Commission 2012 for strengthening teacher education in India. They have addressed the concerns which we have mentioned just above. The first one is government should increase its investment for establishing teacher education institutions and increase institutional capacity 
of teacher preparation. To bring in a transparent procedure of pre-entry testing of candidates for pre-service teacher education programs, keeping in view the variation in local conditions. The duration of teacher education should be increased and it should be made a part of higher education. New teacher education institutions can be located in multi and interdisciplinary environment. The current teacher education programs needs to be redesigned based on the recommendations of the NCFTE 2009. Every pre-service teacher education institution should have an experimental school attached to it so that student teachers will get opportunities to experiment with new ideas and develop capacities and skills to become reflective practitioners. There is a need to establish a national level academic body for continual reflection and analysis of teacher education programs, their norms and standards, development of reading material, and faculty development of teacher educators. Distance learning programs and use of blended learning materials may be developed and used for continuing professional development of school teachers and teacher educators. Faculty development programs for teacher educators should be institutionalized. Creation of an inter-university center in teacher education for enhancing investment in promotion of research in teacher education and education in general in the universities. So these were the recommendations given by Justice Verma Commission. Now, let us discuss in brief the historical perspectives of teacher education in India. First, moving on to the pre-independence era, the Vedic education. In the Vedic India, the teacher enjoyed a special status and position. According to the Rig Veda, a teacher was selected and then educated or trained effectively. The teacher must have passed through the recognized curriculum and have fulfilled all the duties of a brahmachari before he was allowed to become a teacher. There was an intimate relationship between the teacher and the disciple. The teacher had the freedom to accept a disciple, but once he accepted a disciple, it became his moral duty to see that the disciple grew. Similarly, a disciple or student had the freedom to choose his teacher, which is a very wonderful option. And knowledge was transmitted orally and explanation was one of the important methods of teaching. The next, Buddhist education. Buddhist education was mainly religious and the aim was to gain salvation, that is Nirvana. Like Vedic education, it was training for moral character rather than psychological development of the students. Much emphasis was laid on efficiency of teachers. The teacher must have spent 10 years as a monk and have purity of character. He must have a high mental order and the teacher must give his disciple all possible intellectual and spiritual help and guidance. The relations between teacher and student were like father and son. The teacher was regarded as spiritual father or intellectual father of the student. Education was imparted through monasteries and viharas. The teacher and the disciples lived together and verbal education was given importance followed by debates, discussions, conferences and tours. Next we will see the medieval period. In the Muslim period also, the teacher was respected as during the Brahmanic or Buddhist period. There was intimate relationship between the teacher and the pupil, although the practice of living with the teacher was not as common with the Muslim as it was in the case of Brahmanic and Buddhist period. Primary education was imparted in maktabs and secondary and higher education in madrasas. Social status of a teacher was high and they were considered men of character. The number of students with the teacher was limited and so the teacher paid individual attention to each student. The teacher would also take the help of senior and advanced students to teach the younger or the junior 
even if he did not have many students to teach. The method of teaching was mainly oral. Cramming and memorizing was also prevalent. Now, dear students, coming to the reports of various commissions and committees. The first one, the Woods Dispatch of 1854. It discussed the great deficiency in the facilities for teachers training in India and called for the establishment of training schools and classes for masters in each presidency of India. It suggested training of primary school teachers in normal schools and recommended sufficient salary for school teachers in order to bring better quality teachers to school service. It suggested the introduction of pupil teacher system as prevailed in England into India and an award or stipend to the pupil teachers and a small payment to the masters of the school to which they were attached. On successful completion of the training program, they were to be given certificates and employment. The next is Lord Stanley's Dispatch, 1859. In 1859, Lord Stanley, Secretary of State for India, in his dispatch, set forth an examination of the operation of the 1854 dispatch. The dispatch very emphatically stated that the administration should desist from pro procuring teachers from England and that teachers for vernacular schools should be made available locally. Moving on to the Indian Education Commission of 1882. This commission recommended training institutions for primary and secondary school teachers. It recommended that the supply of normal schools, whether government or aided, be localized in order to provide for the local requirements of all primary schools, whether government or aided, within the division under each inspector. For secondary school teachers, it recommended that an examination in the principles and practice of teaching be instituted, success in which should be a condition of permanent employment as a teacher in any secondary school, government or aided. For graduates, it suggested a shorter course of training than for others. Let's now see the Government of India Resolution in Education Policy of 1904. This is one of the most important educational documents which laid down the policies for the future educational system. It made some very vital suggestions for the improvement of the teacher training program. These were training colleges. The resolution enunciated that if secondary education was to be improved, then the teachers should be trained in the art of teaching. There were five teacher training colleges in all at places like Madras, Kursiung, Allahabad, Lahore and Jabalpur. Intermediates or graduates could seek admission to these colleges. The general principles upon which the training institutions were to be developed were to enlist more men of ability and experience in the work of higher training, to equip the training colleges well, to make the duration of the training program two years and for graduates one year. The course would comprise knowledge of the principles which underlie the art of teaching and some degree of technical skill in the practice of the art. The course would culminate in a university degree or diploma. There should be a close link between theory and practice and practice teaching schools should be attached to each college. These schools should be fully equipped with well-trained teachers whose examples the students should emulate. They should have a good library and museum. There should be a close link between the training colleges and the school so that the students do not neglect the methods learned in the college. The students should be occasionally brought together again and the inspecting staff and the training college authorities should try that the influence of the college is felt in the schools. Training schools. The resolution recommended opening of more training schools, particularly in Bengal. The normal schools were mostly boarding schools where students with vernacular education came for training and were given stipends. They received general education, 
combined with the instruction in the methods of teaching and practice in teaching. The resolution recommended a minimum course of two years. It mentioned courses of training specially suited for teachers of rural areas. Thus, it can be observed that the recommendations and suggestions of the resolution were of far-reaching importance. Some of the suggestions of the resolution were not implemented and several recommendations were implemented. Some changes took place in the field of teacher training. Universities instituted the BT degree for graduate teachers. Rethinking on the syllabus improvements in facilities, etc. were the outcomes of the resolution. The next is the Government of India Resolution on Education Policy, 1913. The second resolution on educational policy pinpointed the weaknesses of the system and suggested many useful measures with regard to improvement of primary education. The resolution suggested that teachers should be drawn from the class of the boys whom they will teach and they should have passed the middle vernacular examination and undergone a year's training. It suggested periodical repetition and improvement courses for teachers. The resolution emphasized that no teacher should be allowed to teach without a certificate and that should be a constant exchange of ideas amongst the training college staff members and that they should visit different colleges. Coming on to Calcutta University Commission of 1917. This commission, known as the Sadler Commission, studied all aspects of the university education and presented its voluminous report in 1919. It also touched upon the teacher education program and made some valuable recommendations. It pointed out that the painful inadequacy of training institutions and the poor quality of training provided in them. It suggested that the training program should not only make the trainee a competent classroom teacher, but also a good administrator. The commission suggested opening of postgraduate departments of education in universities equip each department with a professor, a reader and a number of assistants and institute a postgraduate degree in education. It recommended the introduction of education as an optional subject at the graduation and postgraduate level. The next is the Harter Committee Report of 1929. Working on the recommendations of the Sadler Commission, 13 out of 18 universities set up faculties of education. The Lady Irwin College was set up in New Delhi. Andhra University started a new degree, the B.Ed. in 1932. Bombay launched a postgraduate degree, the M.Ed. in 1936. Some other important changes in the field of education also took place in the 30s. The Central Advisory Board of Education was revived. Basic education was started by Mahatma Gandhi in 1937, leading to training of teachers for basic schools. In 1938, a basic training college was set up at Allahabad and the Vidya Mandir training school was started at Wardha in 1938. The Abbott Wood Report. Now, this report submitted in 1937 is again a landmark in the field of education. It primarily analyzed the position of vocational education but also made valuable suggestions about teacher education. According to the report, the duration of training should be three years to enable the pupil to continue with general education along with professional training. It further suggested a refresher course for the teacher so that he could get a wider experience. Although there was improvement in the percentage of trained teachers from 56.8% in 1937 to 61.3% in 1942, yet there was much still to be done for achieving qualitative improvement. In 1941, there were 612 normal schools, out of which 376 were for men and 236 for women. These schools provided one or two years training. There were 25 training colleges for graduates, which were inadequate to meet the needs of the time. In 1941, the Vidya Bhavan Teachers College was started in Rajasthan and the Tilak College of Education in Pune. Bombay took the lead in starting a doctorate degree in education the same year. Next is the Surgent Report of 1944. 
In 1944, the Central Advisory Board of Education presented a scheme of education, post-war educational development in India, popularly known as the Surgeon Plan. The scheme was a broad-based educational plan. It made some practical suggestions for teachers' training program. It recommended that suitable boys and girls should be inducted into the teaching profession after high school. Practical training should be provided, refresher courses be planned, and research facilities be provided. It suggested a two-year course for pre-primary and junior basic schools and a three-year course for the senior basic schools. The non-graduate teachers in high schools were to go for two-year training and the graduates for one-year training. The first year of the two years training should be devoted to the study of the general and professional subjects. It should be supported by school visits, discussions and other experiences to kindle the trainee's interest in education. It proposed revised pay scales for all categories of teachers to attract better teachers. Now, dear students, let us have a glimpse of the recommendations of various commissions and committees on teacher education during the post-independence era, the first one being the University Education Commission, 1948-49. The commission observed that the training colleges had no basic orientations in the essentials. For improvement of teacher training, it suggested that the teacher educators must look at the whole course from a different angle, that the theory and practice should support each other, that the intelligent following of rule of thumb methods should be made, trainees be recruited from people having a first-hand experience of school teaching, that courses in the theory of education must be flexible and adaptable to local circumstances, that original work by professors and lectures in education should not suffer from isolation and lack of inter-university planning. The Secondary Education Commission, one of the most important events of the planned decade was the report of the Secondary Education Commission. It analyzed the problems of teachers and the training program in great depth. It emphasized that the most important factor in educational reconstruction is the teacher, his personal qualities, his educational qualifications, his professional training, and the place he occupies in the school as well as in the community. So, the Commission made recommendation on all these aspects and found three types of teacher training institutions, the primary teacher training, the secondary teacher training institution, and training colleges. Another important commission is the Kothari Commission, 1964-66. In 1964, an education commission was set up by the Government of India under the chairmanship of Dr. D.S. Kothari to advise on the educational setup. The Commission observed that a sound program of professional education for teachers was essential for the qualitative improvement of education. The Commission pointed out the weakness of the existing system and suggested ways to improve it. It recommended that isolation of teachers' colleges with the universities, schools and the teachers' colleges themselves should be removed. It spelled out the ways and means to do so. For qualitative improvement, it recommended subject orientation and introduction of integrated courses of general and professional education. It suggested ways to improve the quality of teacher educators. It advised the state governments to prepare a plan for the expansion of training facilities. The Commission very correctly diagnosed the ills in teacher education and suggested practical remedies. The Chattopadhyaya Committee of 1983-85, to it said that the minimum length of training for a secondary teacher should be five years following the completion of class 12. It reiterated the need to enable general and professional education to be pursued concurrently and the need for an integrated four-year program. The National Policy on Education, 1986, reiterated that teacher education is a continuous process and pre-service and in-service components are inseparable. According to the National Policy on Education, stress must be given to the teacher education program. Training schools were to be upgraded to district institutes of education and training, the diet, and training colleges upgraded into colleges of teacher education, the CTEs, and Institutes of Advanced Studies in Education, IASEs. There must be 
provisions for research and innovation in IASEEs. Next is the Acharya Ramamurthy Committee 1990. It recommended the need for an internship model based on the primacy and value of actual field experience in a realistic situation on development of teaching skills by practice over a period of time. The training program should be competence based and there should be an integration of theory and practice for situational applications. In-service and refresher courses are to be specific and they should be related to the specific needs of the teachers. In-service programs should take due care of the future needs of teacher growth, evaluation and follow-up should be a part of the scheme. Research support and research should also support better management including delivery system of the program. So this was about the recommendations given by various commissions, committees, reports. We can see that teacher education has undergone, in fact it is undergoing a lot of changes with respect to the curriculum, the pattern, the duration like we have made it two year now, the B.Ed and M.Ed. So based on the recommendations given by committees and commissions formed during the pre-independence and post-independence era. But we still need many more such valuable recommendations from new committees and commissions in the present era in order to further reconstruct and strengthen teacher education in India. So this was about our module. And before winding up, let us have a brief recap of what we discussed just now. First, we got an insight on the concept of teacher education. We reflected on the objectives of teacher education in India and got a better understanding of the current concerns of teacher education in India. We also had a look on the recommendations of the Justice Verma Commission for strengthening teacher education in India. Then we had a brief glimpse of the major recommendations given by various commissions and committees on teacher education in India during the pre-independence and post-independence period. So with this, we conclude our session. Thank you.